this appears to be a limited operation, but of course it uh, much of that depends on what comes next. They have said, I think quite clearly, it's no secret that they want to conduct a major military operation there. We have made clearly made clear that we oppose such an operation. That was State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller this afternoon on Israel's operations in Rafah. Miller said the United States is still working to an achieve an immediate ceasefire and release of hostages in Gaza. Let's bring in our reporter panel, Sabrina Siddiqui and Alexandra Ward. Sabrina is a national politics reporter for The Wall Street Journal, and Alex is a national security reporter for Politico. It's great to see you both. So, Alex, I have your latest article here, and basically you make the point that the administration has been pretty murky in terms of what they consider to be an invasion into Rafah and also what consequences there may be if that happens. So what is their message today tell you about those two things? Well, look, every time an administration official says they've been clear, I, I wince a little bit because they just clearly have it. I mean, in, in one end, actually, Miller says at one point, uh, this is actually the prelude to a major invasion. And then he was pressed on that. He goes, actually, no, 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 it's not a prelude or it is a prelude. He wasn't sure. John Kirby, the National Security Council spokesperson, tells reporters first that it's, you know, it's not a, they're against a major operation. And then it's, well, we're against an operation that's big or small. But then with the caveat of, well, a small operation that puts a lot of people at risk. So basically, what is it? Is it that the, now that the Israelis are in Rafah, is this an invasion? If it's not the invasion that they're worried about, well, then how big can it get? Uh, they just aren't as clear or as uh, providing the kinds of parameters that they need to provide. And at this point, the Israelis have done, they have defied the United States. They've gone into Rafah, and we don't see any reprimand or any sort of push against that uh, in the coming days. And Sabrina, does it seem like they are creating some space for themselves to not have to change U.S. policy, even though it was just last month that they said, look, if Israel doesn't change its policies or strategies, we're going to have to. But now, despite the fact that there is an invasion, although limited in scope, according to the administration, you know, there aren't repercussions. You know, I think that you, on the one hand, you see this uh, delay that the, the administration has confirmed with respect to certain shipments, uh, weapon shipments to Israel, but they, they're reiterating that there's no change in overall policy, right? They're not withholding or pulling, withholding aid or pulling support uh, from the Israeli government and its military offensive in Gaza more broadly. And I think part of that is because the White House was sounding a very optimistic tone today about a possible you know, ceasefire deal that would involve the release of uh, the hostages that are currently being held by Hamas in exchange for some kind of temporary ceasefire in Gaza. And that is the administration's top priority. So, you know, getting too aggressive in their approach with the Israeli government or being too outwardly critical is something that I think they feel would jeopardize their leverage with the Israeli government after a very tense period, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the relationship between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu, as we know, uh, has really deteriorated in recent months. So I think a lot of it really just has to do uh, with, on the one hand, reckoning with this, uh, you know, in invasion, the Rafa operation underway, where there's about a million and a half Palestinians who are sheltering a lot of concerns about the civilian impact, even if it's limited in its scope, as what the Israelis are saying, with, of course, balancing that with their hope that maybe the Hamas and Israel are closer to a ceasefire deal than they have been in months and just trying to get that through. Well, of course, because if there is a ceasefire deal, the issue of Rafa sort of takes care of itself, right? Because there would be at least a temporary ceasefire. So today we heard from John Kirby, a spokesperson for the National Security Council, that things are looking pretty good. But do you have any... Uh, what does that mean at this point? I mean, they look good in the sense that there are people talking right now uh, in Doha, right? The CIA director, Bill Burns, uh, is there. Uh, they're having their conversations. The confusion yesterday over what deal Hamas mm -hmm. might have agreed to or not has somewhat resolved itself. It seems like it was changed language, but based off of the Israeli proposal. So maybe that they're closer than, than we initially right. thought. Uh, but the fact that those conversations are ongoing and they might be closer than they thought, that leads to some optimism. But it's one of those things where, you know, no deal is done until it's done. And the biggest go ahead, the biggest sticking point really is just that, you know, right now, Hamas is essentially embracing a ceasefire deal that would be in phases with initially more of a temporary ceasefire. Mm -hmm. But eventually, you know, as, as, it, as it's phased in require the withdrawal of essentially all Israeli troops from Gaza. So, you know, an end to a more permanent ceasefire, whereas Israel, of course, has said Netanyahu has categorically ruled out 
ending the war in its entirety, and Israel is still only open to a temporary ceasefire. So that appears to be the biggest sticking point. But of course, the stakes for Biden are extremely high in an election year, where this has just really dominated uh, the domestic political climate here at home, where he's facing backlash over his handling of the war with key constituencies that the Democratic Party is relying on in November. And so for them, I think achieving some kind of ceasefire deal in the hopes that it would you know, I think settle things in Gaza at least for a few months. That's really, I think, high priority for this administration and would really ease some of the political fallout for them. Yes. And the pressure on President Biden, because, um, you know, I know we don't like to talk in hypotheticals, but if there is not a ceasefire deal and if this invasion into Rafah becomes greater um, and the, the administration does or does not respond, can you talk about the political implications of that? Well, the polling is a little weird on this, right? Because in Michigan, where there's been a lot of attention on, you know, how Arab Americans and Muslim Americans in that state have been feeling about the war, Biden occasionally polls like he's ahead. Uh, most people seem to be focused on inflation, economic issues, than they are on the war, which does not take away the fact that there are massive wide-scale campus protests, that there is a, a, immense dissatisfaction, especially from younger Democrats or progressives. Uh, with his uh, Israel policy. But I think you've, you've seen the president. I mean, he spoke to this when he gave the speech about the protests, right? I mean, he basically said, yeah. you're welcome to protest. Have fun. You haven't changed my mind. And nothing's really going to change Biden's mind here. The only thing that changes his opinion on pretty much anything is if his inner circle revolts. Mm -hmm. And and so far, there's been no defections. There's been no anger. Yes, there have been some lower level uh, resignations from throughout the government, but no one that Biden necessarily knows or cares about. And so in that case, you know, he's. it seems like it's falling on deaf ears effectively. And this is very difficult, tricky ground for the administration. And thank you both so much for sharing your reporting with us today. Alexander Ward and Sabrina Siddiqui.